Tennis is a game of errors. Even at the very top levels of the game, 70% of points end with somebody just missing a shot. And for the rest of us mere mortals, it's higher than that. So the bottom line is super simple. If you can find a tactic, find a strategy, find a shot, find a position to make your opponent uncomfortable, they'll make more mistakes and you will be more successful. That's why in this lesson, I'm gonna be revealing three really underutilized strategies that you can use in your very next match to draw more mistakes from your opponent, be more successful, have more fun, and win more matches. Plus, at the end, I've got a really exciting announcement, so stay tuned for that. This is footage from the finals of the Australian Open in 2021, Djokovic versus Medvedev. Check out this uh, point here, Medvedev serving, cross-court return. They get into a little bit of a cross-court rally, Djokovic changes direction. And I watch this shot very closely. It's not a drop shot. It's not really a rally slice. It's kind of something halfway in between. And Medvedev is obviously, you know, you can imagine being him, obviously pretty upset and disappointed about missing that shot. Let's break this down and talk about why Medvedev missed this shot. Uh, so badly, because it's worth talking about. Djokovic and Medvedev are two of the most consistent, steady tennis players on the face of the earth. So anytime somebody misses a shot that you know should be easy-ish, it's not like this is a, a drop shot that barely made it over the net. It's not a penetrating, you know, offensive shot. It's just it's from the surface. It just kind of looks like an average, okay shot that lands short from Novak. And Medvedev hits this. I mean. Is it the middle of the net? Is it the bottom of the net? Uh, no, that's definitely bottom of the net. <laughs> so we should pay attention to that. Medvedev is known for his consistency. So anytime he hits a shot in the bottom of the net, let's talk about why that is. Anytime you're playing somebody who's super consistent, like Daniil is, he makes his living, like literally, in his case, moving back and forth, side to side. So when Novak hits this shot, which is... I mean, he received a waist-tight ball here. He could have basically done whatever he wanted with this shot. So for him to go big, kind of chopping, watch the, the technique on this swing here. For him to take a big, kind of chopping slice at this shot, and then watch how it crosses the net here. Barely crosses the net and lands about a foot or so inside the, uh, the service line and barely comes up after that. Daniil's hitting this like around knee height. So Novak hit this very low over the net. A lot of backspin, not super short. It was somewhere, you know, just inside the, uh, the service line. What he's doing here is purposefully pulling Medvedev forwards off of the platform that he's used to grinding from. Medvedev is used to running back and forth, side to side, defensive shot, defensive shot, eventually offensive shot. And so what Novak is doing here is totally changing the tempo. He's totally changing the rhythm. And he's telling Medvedev, Instead of doing this and going back and forth, I'm going to force you to do this and just deal with it and just see what he does. And so this shot from Medvedev, frankly, uh, you know, hitting the bottom of the net is probably just kind of a last second brain fart. Like, what do I do in this situation? Novak did not do much of this in this match. And we can learn, we can all learn something from this. If you throw in a change of pace, especially when there's a, a big established pattern from your opponent and you force them to break that pattern, you cause lack of rhythm, lack of timing, lack of comfort, lack of balance, and they will start to make mistakes. So take notes on this. Anything you can do to cause your opponent to break their rhythm, their tempo, their timing, their errors are gonna skyrocket. So copy this at home and you will be more successful. This next sneaky tactic from Djokovic takes that same kind of theme we just talked about and layers on top of it. Watch, watch what he does here. This time, uh, in this point, after a couple shots, Novak hits an actual drop shot right here. And we're gonna talk about exactly how he's able to do this and why he's able to get into this cat and mouse game. Medvedev eventually just makes a, a terrible error because he's super uncomfortable. This is not the game you know, he trains for. He doesn't train for drop shot lob you know, kind of scenarios. Neither does hardly anybody else. So when Novak hits this drop shot, which now this is a drop shot, it's, it's bouncing just a couple of feet past the net, uh, very short in the court. And so here Medvedev has to charge forward. So he's 100% committing to coming forwards to the net. Whereas the previous one was kind of a little a little bit, uh, I don't know, on the fence. I'm not quite sure what to do with this shot. This is completely different, much shorter, and he has to come forwards. Now watch Novak as 
Medvedev starts to charge forwards to get this shot. Look at Novak. He's watching him closely, watching him closely. He's starting to sneak forwards a little bit. And what he's watching for here is what contact is my opponent going to make? What height contact is my opponent going to hit from on this next shot? If he reads that Medvedev is going to be uh, dipping down, diving down with his racket and barely getting the ball, which is the case here, then the smart strategy on the other side is to come forwards to the net and sneak forwards. So he's like watching, 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 watching. Oh, he's struggling, he's struggling. Okay, it's time to start coming forwards. And so this split step happens right as Medvedev hits. And so uh, by the time Medvedev hits the ball, Novak is two, three steps inside the baseline, which means that if Medvedev doesn't hit a fantastic shot, Novak can take it out of the air and just kind of keep the, keep the cycle going and make him scramble again, make him scramble again, make him, so he's just keeping control of the scenario here. And so here we see, uh, you know, kind of a, a cheeky shot with the, the volley lob, not an easy shot, but what he's doing here is he's layering depth movement for Medvedev. Medvedev just had to charge forwards. Novak did a fantastic job reading the scenario and positioning himself to exploit the next ball. And now he's forcing Medvedev to charge backwards. What does Medvedev normally do? He normally is on this plane of movement and Novak is forcing him to move on a completely different plane of movement. So by the time Daniil gets back uh, for this shot, he's run in all kinds of directions that he's not used to having to run. And he just hits a, it's just an awkward shot. It's a, it'd be a tough shot for any of us. But again, here's the note that you wanna take at home. Decode, analyze, what does my opponent love to do? And not every single point, but occasionally throw in a complete change of pace. Get them to do something completely different than they're used to doing. They'll be more uncomfortable, they'll make more errors, you will be more successful. This last one isn't so much a strategy as it is a mindset, a mentality. Watch these points, I want you to see what they, what they have in common. All three of these points, one of the two players is gonna be put in what seems to be like an impossible situation or scenario. And yet, they're gonna end up still drawing an error from their opponent. So like a super awkward looking overhead from Novak there. And in this, I don't remember what order these in, we'll, we'll find out together. Uh, this one, Novak, impossible situation, the sliding, you know, stab, and then just gets back into kind of neutral rally and grinds it out. And eventually Medvedev makes the error. As you can see, Novak there like pumped about his effort. And it's kind of similar thing uh, on this one, Novak in a lot of trouble right here, just like shovels it back. And Medvedev with the super, super routine volley. I mean, this is a volley that any of you watching, and myself included, I would 100% expect to make this volley. I mean, shoulder height, look at Novak's position, completely off the court. And so it's very, very obvious, you know, what's going on here. And so the reason why Medvedev missed this shot, it, th this is mental warfare going on back and forth. Anytime your opponent puts you in an impossible situation, your mindset should be just any way possible, just get it in. One more ball, just get one more ball in play. Those are the situations where most tennis players give up and they're just like, shoot, I'm so far behind in this point. Oh, good shot, you know, nice job. But players like Novak are incredible at flipping those situations, putting the pressure right back in their opponent, and occasionally you'll get the loose air. And that can be a huge pivot point in a match where you grab momentum and they lose it. So another kind of strategy here is just have a mentality. Do not let the ball bounce twice. And if you ever stop running when the ball bounces for the second time, you haven't done your job. Chase down every ball, make them play just one more, one more, one more. If you've been paying attention over the last couple of videos, I'm sure you've noticed a theme. The more errors you can get from your opponent, the more successful you're going to be. It really is that simple because the vast majority of tennis points end with somebody making a mistake. So if you can find the tactic, if you can find the target, the shot selection, the technique, or maybe the position on the court or the mindset that draws more errors out of your opponents, you're maximizing the biggest chunk of points that happen in any given match. And so you're going to win more points. You're gonna be more successful. It really is that simple, but unfortunately most players don't focus on their errors, they focus on winners. They focus on trying to hit like that perfect highlight shot. And those shots are dramatically more difficult to hit than it is to make your opponent a little uncomfortable and elicit the error from them instead. So 
I'm sure if you followed what you've learned over the last three videos, you've already seen success. And if that's the case, if you've already seen more points won, more games won, or matches won, please do me a favor and just click the like button on this video and tell me about it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about your success using the tactics and strategies and techniques that we've talked about in the last three videos. But I want you to know that what we've talked about is just the tip of the iceberg. I've been working for decades as a tennis coach and during that time, I've gathered tons of information and knowledge, tactics, strategies, techniques about how to make opponents uncomfortable in singles and in doubles. And the announcement that I'm so excited to tell you about in this video is I've put them all together into one comprehensive, complete training program. And that training program is getting ready to come out. It's called Make Them Miss. And the name says it all. It's laser focused in on how you can make your opponents make more errors. Tactics, strategies, techniques, different tools in your toolbox, mentality behind drawing more errors out of your opponents. If you put these things in play, I really believe it's your fastest way to more success on the court. Don't get me wrong, weapons are important, offense is important, hitting a winner here and there is super satisfying, and you should be looking for that too. But if you're looking for quick results and more wins at the level you're playing right now, just by utilizing a couple of simple different targets and tactics like what we've talked about over the last three videos, this is exactly the program you're looking for. It's not quite ready yet. We're putting the finishing touches on it, but I will let you know as soon as it's ready so that you can jump on the inside, start utilizing what you learn immediately and seeing better results in your matches right away. So with that, I hope this series has been super valuable to you. Thank you so much for watching and supporting along the way. And I'm really excited to see you inside of Make Them Miss. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.